Okay, uh, we really are starting. Hi, 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 hi. Um, this is Carrie Marsh, and you're looking at a behind the chart uh, live stream. Um, it's been a long time. It's been months since I've done one of these, um, but it is uh, it is time. Um, so I am. Uh, I'm just gonna in the, at the beginning of this. I have to kind of double check to see if uh, everything is is working. Um, Sorry, pardon me as I bring back the uh, <laughs> my streaming page, uh, view on watch page. Oh, it's a new stream. Uh, this is, actually, that's the old one. I actually want to get rid of that video. Um, sorry for this taking a little bit of time. YouTube Studio. Are we? Properly live streaming. Let's see. Live streaming. Look at my live dashboard and see if this is showing up. Um, oh, look, there's some people. Hey, what's up? I see you back arranging lines. Hey, Zora Claw and Timothy Irvin. <laughs> that has carried. It's been a while since you stream. I know. Um, during the school year, it's particularly challenging for me to uh, get this work done, but I am. Uh, I'm happy to have found some time this evening of kind of forcing the issue here just to make sure that I got this work done because um, this chart is for Millican University. Um, my friend Steve Wiedenhofer, Dr. Steve Wiedenhofer, who is uh, in his last year teaching there. And um, so this is kind of special and this is a, a particular tune he likes and wanted me to arrange. Um, I, I have to tell you, I'm going to play you what, I, what I've got so far. Um, and then I think the first move I'm going to make is to completely wipe out this intro because I don't know what I was thinking. <sighs> so, yeah, this is my extreme hydration. My students are getting used to that right now. So, um, so here's I think I've used this too much in the past, um, and I think four four is too arbitrary. I think this tempo is too slow. Uh, I, I just haven't felt, I, I haven't felt like this totally works. There's, there's some of this that I like, but it's not particularly relevant to, um, you must believe in spring. So, uh, I think I may actually begin this chart with like two part acapella and kind of go straight ahead and then see if I can get it to develop from there, uh, starting with reharm with key changes, um, like this might have to be faster. Uh, I might change the time signature. Th this part right here, uh, when you hear it, it, this is the thing I like the most so far, but but really this is, um, it is really just a start. Um, and I have to do a lot of work on it. So um, this really needs to get done this weekend. Um, can't get it done tonight, most likely, but I should make some progress. So I'm going to play this. It's going to be, I think, you'll see. It just doesn't work.
must have. I'm sure I just, I'm sure I just played it. So, um, uh, okay. So some things stand out. Like I, I, I might start. Well, first of all, I'm just gonna delete this intro. I'm done with it. I'm really done with it. Um, I hate this when you have to do this. Uh, I'm gonna put this. Oh no, it's okay. I guess I'll get rid of this, add 4-4, four, four, because it's going to get rid of it. Uh, no, just get rid of that. Oh, weird. It says B. Why would it say? Oh, oh. <laughs> God dang it. Don't. That could make a highlight. Oh, weird. It says B. Yeah, dummy, because I still have the A there. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, what do I need? I need a time signature, because it is in 4-4 four, four at this point. So yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I think I'll just start at acapella um, and on the tune uh, at the top of the, at the at the top of the head, really, and not necessarily try uh, doing anything wild at the beginning. Just do something that's sweet and easy to sing, and uh, not just easy to sing, but um, that sets up a vocal jazz chart, basically. Um, also, maybe. You know, I like to be insidious, insidious with some surprises, so maybe I'll be able to fit in some surprises here. But so yeah, just once again, let's, let's dig this. This is roughly it. Uh, the way it should go. I think we'll go rubato, but. to sing up there maybe I can give them something else to do um, just think. predictable at this stage. Um, and then... Choices there, I'm sure, and then bass. Mistake. That is, uh, hey Mateo, how you doing? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the welcome. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, I'll, I'll have a few charts to write this this winter. Um, about five or six charts, I think, to get done during school and everything is challenging, but uh, hope to be on more. 
Um. Oh yeah, this is right. here um, running all this in parallel you must be leaving <laughs> Here is where I think I'm going to tame down what the bass does in this section. I think I'm not going to try to do uh, quite the same uh, like groove idea. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to not going to get involved in a lot of eighth notes and stuff. So. Um, so let's see. All right. Mateo, doing fine. My senior year of high school. All right. Congrats. Jesus David Prada Lopez. All right. What's up? Hey. Welcome. How you doing? Good to see you. From Colombia. All right. Welcome. All right. That uh, so far, I you may win our furthest, uh, you may a prize for furthest away tonight. <laughs> um, let me do um, something really simple on this. Actually, um, what is this harmony? Uh, I think there was a mistake. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I know. I think it was supposed to stay as over D pedal. That was my original intent there. So let's just keep it real simple. Strat master, that is amazing. <laughs> All right. Don't know. I might be misinterpreting that. I'm a musician too. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you for clarifying, awesome. <laughs> so let's put a little bit of a groove on this. Well, actually, I, I still don't think we'll put a groove. I think we've got to be patient at this. Uh, yeah, just half step down. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna try to do this groove stuff. Fix a oh, first of all, this was a mistake. Um, so, yeah, this is where I've, I, I had thought about some reharm ID choices. Um, let's just add, change it up just a little bit here, add a little bit more motion. Yeah, and then that kind of sets this figure up a little bit better. Uh, what is that? That's like, first of all, well, it's very flatty here, but I, I, here I want to just call it what it really is, which is E major uh, 13 sharp 11. Um, and so now I got to grab all of this and, yeah, put it down here. Put the stuff that's, uh, yeah. Try to keep it a little higher. Oh, yeah, and I just don't need the bottom notes on this. I'll just delete a manual here. We go. So, um, 
that is an edit. I'm trying to basically pick up the pieces and use as much as I can from what I've already written before I have to start coming up with new ideas. The new ideas will start here. Um, I don't know if it's going oh, gang, uh, but it, it seemed to make sense coming out of of uh, this figure where it, it's, you know, rhythm sections like um, uh, sudden, uh, what, what was it? Uh, what would we like to call this? Yeah, anyway. It's a subito out, but I don't know what to say about that. Um, oh, nice. Oh, that's right. You're a Cherry Creek. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, Zorark uh, Claw. It's my sophomore year of high school. Still keeping up with Danny Fong. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, and I was uh, able to get in the audition choir at Cherry Creek. Well, heck, yeah, you were. Well done. I, in fact, I remember we probably talked about that this summer. And you were hoping to make it. And, uh, man, look. You're hanging out on my live stream, geeking out, watching some vocal jazz arranging. I mean, oof, that is awesome. <laughs> that 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 bodes well for your uh, your interest, at least, in being in a good choir at school. <laughs> I would say. And uh, Cherry Creek, that's no small feat. That's a really great program. So here's what we've got: um, two part, simple; three part, pretty simple but slight like reharm concept a little bit uh reharm comes in with the bass the vocals don't have to uh, you know the vo vocals can kind of uh, have more flexibility with what kind of voicings we use here in this whole section um and then piano enters for the first time um and uh introduces uh the soloist for the first time um so what are these these changes? Am I happy with this? And do I want to build some uh, backgrounds? Um, so. D alt there. Um, to the Is that like to all? Why? Why do I have that? Did I, I just? I, I'm trying to remember the origin of that material. Uh, I've got the chart here. Is there? Is it from something? I mean. No, no, this is all from Reharm. So I, 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 at some point I met this, but I don't really love the um, rhyme. Uh, I, don't, I don't love the uh, result that I'm getting right now. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to go D7 off there. Yeah, some of the chords remind me of uh, Around Midnight by New York Voices a little bit. They might. Yeah, we're speaking the same language here. Um, and I'm not, not going for anything um, extraordinarily innovative at the moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, I might get the inkling to, to try something new here in a bit. But this, these are all things that, so far, I mean, they should work. This, these, uh, you know, these voicings should sound pretty good um, with a... With an excellent college vocal jazz group like Milliken's uh, One Voice. Um, so let me see if this reharm is going to be all right. Okay, so. It's really strange. And then um, all the notations. Oh, this is weird. I need to get get at this. Oh, Jesus says, um, 
I've been following your work with uh, uh, Sacramento State Jazz Singers. Oh, wow. Back in the day. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for checking that out. My foolish heart. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Uh, it was a good group, you know. And, and I have to tell you the story behind recording that video. Um, we actually were working on um, making a music video for something. I never tried it before, but we got a green screen. Um, we did all this. Uh, we did all these, like... It was on it was on one of our students' charts, and and um, we ended up not finishing that project. Um, but we had we had recorded it. We did all this uh, like all these weird like dance moves. It was basically trying to go for what like nowhere would do. Of course, years later. Um, but um, I guess they had probably started. I don't know. Uh, it, in any event, like we uh, at the at the very end of that session, we're like, oh, hey, let's do one on uh, my foolish heart. And so had everybody um, go sit on the green screen, and uh, we played the recording, and uh, and they they just sang along with this long track, but we just did one take, um, and uh, of, of the visual on this thing, and we, we took the video of it, and uh, except it, it was it ended up being two takes, and that's why the thing goes, um, it, it kind of goes out um, all of a sudden, like goes to black. Well, the reason it went to black is because we lost power. Um, uh, and needed to do like a cross edit with like so we started in the middle we were running out of time need we we're gonna lose people they needed to leave that day and so uh, when the power came back on we started again and did uh, the second half of the tune hoping that the first half had properly saved and everything because the camera lost power and all that it turned out it did work and um, we just were able to splice those two uh, together and there's just this moment where it seems like it kind of makes sense maybe for the video to go away and so we, we just edited it like that other than that it's a single shot uh, of the group uh, syncing to that you know lip syncing to that um, to that recording that they had made but that's amazing how much good response i've gotten on that chart like really amazing um amazing to me because the the charts existed for a while um it was a thing that i wrote on um as part of a a, a sort of social commission project I, I tried to uh to get people to uh um vote on which song they wanted me to arrange and i'll probably do more of that later too um but uh anyway it was a it was a fun project that thing and i'm really glad that people like it and Zach says, "Woo, vocal jazz is back. <laughs> it never left, my friend. Well, it definitely uh, left for a while. I wasn't feeling up to doing this stuff. Like political stuff was, I just feel like that that wasn't the it wasn't the priority to think about vocal jazz arranging for a while. So I took a break. Um, uh, it just I just didn't feel right doing it. I wrote I wrote more music, but um, I just wasn't putting it out there like this." Um, kind of dug in a little bit but i feel like being out there now and telling everybody to vote hey vote 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 if you can my gosh wow you can and uh that's gonna be really really important especially if you're from columbia <laughs> sorry i guess it doesn't count there but uh, um all right so here here comes um i need to write some background vocals um the tempo is slow know if I've said um, well I've said in time 90 so we, we should we should be going about 90 here let's see oh, and by the way piano doesn't need to be doing any of this left hand work what am I doing um, maybe here <sighs> let's see so, uh, yeah, so uh, this will sound pretty good on its own just with some jazzy accompaniment, and I don't need to do too much with this. Uh, bass will eventually get, get all these uh, chord changes, by the way. Um, now, um, yeah, so let's see. Let's have the ensemble. Um, Yeah, 
so yeah. Um, oops, not that far. Um, and then I'm not sure how to voice this chord after that, but. Um, oops. Let's see, I might do. Yeah, let's do it that way. tone and then just um, and I see emptiness and think well maybe I should do some sort of a uh, uh, some sort of a obviously play on that by just at least not having backgrounds Ooh, uh. Actually, kind of wants. Well, that's right. It wants that line, but I can't do it. Um, ooh, oh, and oh, is, that, is that fast enough? Um, <laughs> Closer to like 96. Will this all work here? Um... I just want to continue the backgrounds. Uh, emptiness makes me feel like providing space, but anyway, that's that's a little cheeky. It doesn't matter. Um... This is still going to be ooh, I think, so the, this is going to go longer. Um. Hey, Bill Torres. 
Now, good to see you. That moment where you have to decide between uh, a beautiful line or text painting sounds awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much, William Torres. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, yeah, that is exactly what, I mean, there is a, text painting would be really nice, and I like to use it on things like emptiness as much as possible. But I mean frozen, what am I going to make it hold frozen for a really long time or something? You can't do everything. So I, at this point, I, I this is exactly when I wanted to uh, bring in those backgrounds in this section. Um, and I really want to continue. Uh, I'll tell you what, maybe it'll be enough if the solo's like emptiness. Um, how, how long should I hold it? <laughs> quick ah just to release this thing and then um, ooh, 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 uh, really, ooh, like crescendo to the uh you can kind of hear that working um oh let's get our slurs going And uh, oof, I feel like they're about to interfere. Um, After that, and uh, but um, a time of year, uh, or something like that. Year here, a second bell. Zorak um, says. Uh, Beautiful voicings. Your voicing is really smooth. Thank you. I, I hope that it, it's not a super ironic that you wrote that just as I wrote some write some bad voice editing. Because actually, <laughs> well, we'll see how this chord turns out. But I think um, this is going to be a leap, um, and this particular leap is one that I try not to do very often. Where the altos say from one note to the next are going higher than the uh the sopranos were in the pre and the first of the two chords like in this case so like sopranos on an e and the uh, altos are on a b don't really want to put the altos higher on the following chord uh than the sopranos just were so that to me isn't terribly smooth voice singing but um it's a thing i want to accomplish here um is this kind of sweep <laughs> can stay Just gonna get them this far. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Bill says, uh, uh, if you could, it'd be awesome to know if you could, uh, or it'd be awesome if you could explain the functionality of all these chords. Um, it'd be awesome to know how they work, but also don't want to ruin your flow. Oh, that's, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I I like to, um, actually, I like to talk about, um, well, sometimes uh, I like to talk about that sort of thing when, um, especially when I've lost, when I've lost a flow a little bit. Um, and, uh, uh, but that, this whole thing is flow state for me, though. Um, uh in a, in a way, I mean, there are sub levels of it. There's a time when I basically can forget that I'm streaming and just, just uh, kind of go go go. Um, but uh, the whole process of this actually keeps me, you know, locked in pretty well. So I, I don't worry too much about that. So I can talk about that. Um, the the thing is, I, to some of this, I I honestly don't know how to explain um, <laughs> the functionality of it. A lot of times, it's just ears um, and the fact that my hands kind of tend to go to the right places or the places that I like the sounds. Um, and, and I do have some reliable voicings on like a minor 11 chord and, you know, minor nine kind of thing. Like I did with this one here. The, both of these are, are two fairly just inversions of the same voicing, but I, I, I've used that. Well, it's not quite inversion. There's no G sharp in the first, but um, yeah, but totally two, two totally acceptable F sharp minor voices that, um, that I think have some power in a vocal jazz group. They're open, um, and, I, and I like things like this too, where uh, in the F major 13, the voicing at least, I can explain the function of the voicing better than the chord. The, uh, as, as we hit this on an ah, probably, it's kind of early in the chart to be doing a big move like that, but we'll see. I think it might be okay. Um, but yeah, it starts by not having the half step in the middle there. And the voice sitting for the altos is so a half step down. That's awesome. Rather than which forces them to kind of have to really have to take a stab a minor third away at that F natural if I just get them right to it. So this way they go. And the other cool, cool bit about that obviously is that we get some motion inside there and the first eighth note motion. So I'm 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 pretty happy with all that. Um, this is going to be year, uh, and then we're going to go one and two a uh, time of year. So that's the concept, um, and I don't know exactly how to execute that just yet. But yeah, um, I mean there there are some, some chord functionality. Yeah, that's really tough. Um, and and I, I appreciate that you're you're not like <laughs> demanding it or something. I but uh, I, I will try to fit in some of that and see if um, see if as I'm going I can I can talk about that to some extent. Um, but I am less, huh. I don't know, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't know if I have a lot of, uh, theory that I can talk about, about the, how those things come about, but I'll think about it, I'll think about it. It's been difficult actually, uh, I mean, I can talk about the basics of reharm and stuff, uh, in, you know, what makes a reharmonization, you know, like it works, like E flat major 13 sharp 11 works with these notes because these notes are all in that chord although it wouldn't have originally been that that chord that's that's probably pretty straight ahead and when you look at it you look at a measure you look at b you know b flat a and g and you say which you know, you know put try a bunch of bass notes um and just kind of consider uh, what all the upper structure what the rest of that upper harmony well, would be or could be what are the options and then kind of run through them like this also could have been e flat dominant it's gonna be e you know e flat like seven sharp 11 could have been dominant um but it wasn't the particular sound the kind of bright sound that i was looking for in that spot um so but i'll try to i'll try to explain better as we go but let me get through this section um, so just a time of year uh so we have Here. Um, so you can just do that and it all runs. 
sounds pretty well. Um, and then this G, you know, gives the basses a reasonable chance to get to their. Uh, um, voice leading in this case but it should sound good um so we're crescendoing here and i know that's part of the part of the you know the way the, this thing has to go down in this spot um there's an ah um maybe not too big maybe we'll tell them mf this out <laughs> um Notice I don't always end up doing that. Um, Mr. Torres says, uh, just the information you said they were alone was super helpful. Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm glad, man. Um, so I love these strings. By the way, I sang your Scarborough Fair and sent me on my way arrangements in high school, and they were brilliant. You're super kind. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, that's awesome that you got to do those uh, particular tunes in high school. A couple of acapella. Yeah, the, the acapella stuff. I need to need to write more of it. Um, I mean, I've been, I have been writing lately a bit, but uh, those, you know, they fit practical situations a lot of the time. So, cool, man. Thank you. Ooh, uh, okay, so let's see what this is really like. Uh, let's just consider this here. Let me get... The piano sound loaded and oh dummy. Piano sound loaded and play it. This a time of year actually needs to be um, needs to be quarter note triplets, right? You knew that. Because it's too fast. It's too fast. I mean, I did want to move it a little bit more. So I, I think I have pictured it as I was writing this chunk. I was imagining it slower, so I need to redapt.
means we need to save. It might mean it might mean that it was saving. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> So that how often, if ever, do I use cross voicing? Uh, sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, curious, but like the comment, but I don't distract from writing the chart. No, I appreciate it. It's okay. I can get back into it. Um, I don't. Um, I don't think I use as much of it nearly, uh, nearly as much as I probably should. There's some good uses of it that I kind of neglected, for, no, neglected for a lot of my writing uh, career. Um, one of those, and I think Gene Perling really used this best writing for. Well, both high lows and singers unlimited, but um, when yeah, when you have when you have the altos on the lower part of a half step and the tenors on the upper part of a half step, um, the upper part is nearly universally going to be louder, and that's what you want really by a little bit. You want it to be stronger. So um, yeah, it's, there's no real good reason that um, that I haven't uh, done it more, but I have started to do it more as I've kind of um, been thinking about the technicalities of arranging, mostly from teaching it. Also, even teaching arranging, it's it's maybe, you know, uh, consider uh, consider that as an uh, as a good option. So, good question. I probably should do more. You should you should do some too, occasionally. You know, um, I mean, just when it's the best solution. You know, uh, and it comes. It, it's about timbre, really. It's about the the timbre and the, and the strength of a voice um, making a a higher note sometimes a little bit, making making real sure that it's going to be stronger than the lower note when you need it to be. And that's the case with half steps. Uh, let's see. but this bar is that. Um. I have to do something else uh, and I really like obviously the bass progression from B to C is, is useful there ah. um. so, uh, just to talk again about the the function of the voicings and the chords and all that stuff obviously the the intention behind that is that it's all half step motion I feel like as I was writing the reharm a while ago, that must have been what I was thinking. Is that I probably even would have played that voicing. Perfectly lays out in you know E, e major thirteen sharp eleven. Uh, Zorak says I've analyzed a few Perling scores and the use of cross voicing voicing is truly incredible. Right? I mean, yeah, you know. Uh, one example of tenor always struck me as one of the tenor one was the lowest note of any chord. Oh, interesting. Wow, yeah, well, that's pretty cross voiced, isn't it? I have any chord, I've read that one of the chord. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, so, all right, how do I, I, I think I agree with my past self about B13, but, but what, it, do I need to like go minor on the, no, I can't do that. Yikes. It's really difficult. I don't want to do a beat four move just for the melody because because the melody is going to be freely interpreted. So I need to give some space to something that works with D sharp and E 
and you give some clock time to that, and it's like it needs to be the second half of the bar. So, is there anything? I mean, what is there with B that has B in a bass as a bass note? Um, since I want to get back up into C from that, that also involves. Close the C and go up to C sharp. So yeah, I could do that actually. So that's kind of weak though. Well, dominant. No, that's really that's really weak. And, and, and again, I, I should know the theory behind it. But oh, of course, it's always weak when you have a dominant. You can't go up a whole a whole step to a minor chord. It's weak, but um, I just test those things out, you know. Uh, G major seven in first inversion. I could, I mean, yeah, it'd be it'd get me root movement by um, fifth. Well, um, yeah, huge fan of that. Oh, of course, it gives me. Uh, but it doesn't quite. It doesn't quite solve the problem, though. Yeah, but basically, yeah. It, that's G major seven to first inversion is super that that kind of move. Well, it's exactly what I've got following it, right? So then going up a half step would be nice, but the melody doesn't doesn't make that very friendly. Uh, the D natural in in uh, G major seven, yeah, the D sharp is gonna be gross. It's tough. It doesn't it doesn't give me a lot of options here. Uh, well, I need to spend some time thinking about it. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> solution. and progression and we, we wipe all that and we try to go back to where we last liked it um, and last had something we could move on from um, so right now measure 26 is in danger um, unless I can find a solution out of it that doesn't suck um, that's the problem there's this is so calm like this is so inside E major 13 like, like, Could go straight down to C sharp minor and go ahead and have the root and the melody. It's it breaks one of my cardinal rules. Um, of course I I broke it here too. In a pretty gross way, actually. In fact, do I need to think about that? Yeah, I mean we let up if as long as she sings this on an actual beat four. Um, I don't know, man. Okay. <laughs> solution um 
And your seven sharp or like what a what uh, nine sharp eleven over C sharp, and then we just do a half step move in the other direction. That that does help. I tell you, we get there. That's such a sentence. <laughs> it's so long. Uh, I'll eventually I'll probably I'll fix the way this looks later. But um, okay, so. <laughs> symmetry here so just you know uh, stepwise motion and like half step down the whole step down but all the same thing and then these guys have good voice leading wind up with one of the voicings I like so I mean it is that is that is about what I wanted out of that if, if I could do well, um, all right, I can't pretend, I can't pretend to you all that I saw this melting thing coming. Um, I really can't, um, but, uh, it, let's just keep it between the five of us here that are watching <laughs> you guys that are watching and me um obviously the the half step thing here that i hadn't planned on doing is nice for melting streams or whatever so that, that, <laughs> that i feel better about that now this is a long time let's see how if, if we're gonna make it fun. <laughs> this fade right away over four bars so that's what sound pretty actually let's let this be a two bar decrescendo um it's gonna be suddenly strong again at how crystal clear it seems um but yeah, I like where this is going. in the first hour here hey deandre dude nice to see you on there man welcome great to see you buddy thank you um yeah uh so i th what we accomplished is something that, that i'm pleased about which is we wiped out the first minute of the chart completely and started acapella but i really had to do it i just wasn't feeling like that was legitimate what i was coming up with there and it just didn't feel right so we're doing this in a simpler way and we've made it now a minute and a half into the chart but um there's plenty more of tune left uh, and if we need it to feel robust we can always you know we can always add a section uh if it doesn't feel quite right to go straight through it what i like to do with ballads sometimes is um like well sometimes yeah, like the straight through thing is totally legit on a ballad uh, arrangement if it's going to be like four minutes just straight through the form with some kind of form extension or an extended uh, intro, an interlude, or an outro. And I've done that plenty. Like the, um, But Beautiful is a chart where I did that kind of thing. Um, I think it worked out. I like that ending. It has some blowing over it. It goes through like, goes through all keys, minor chords, by fifths, and, and then winds up the original again after 12 changes and stuff well but anyway that that thing is like half the tune 
So half of the tune is presenting it in a ballad format, kind of, you know, sort of in this sort of way, I guess. Um, and then the end does something interesting. So that, that could be the case here. Maybe something will inspire that. Um, but we've got it. Good. Uh, so just that much. We're up to just the 33 bars. Um, but that is, that's an, this is an important place to be um, because I was, I'd been stuck here for a while. So I'm officially, I'm officially unstuck, um, which I like. So um, now it's, what should I do now? Um, I think I'll come up with, I need to spend a little bit more time thinking about where this wants to go next. So happy that I was able to <laughs> get through this. Let me play through it one time at the end of this and I'll, I'll just I'll just finish this stream now um, after playing through this once. But um, uh, feels good to have gotten just an hour of work in and done something productive because I, a lot of times I feel like I need to find a huge chunk of time, like any date hours to, but, but this helped and, and, and uh, <laughs> I've got momentum on this now, so um, I'm probably going to go do some other work tonight, but um, dig it. I'm happy. So here it is. Thanks for watching this uh, stream. Here's the uh, current state of the chart. <laughs> six bars of six there and a few other okay uh something like that i don't know the uh bell tone sections or something uh anyway well anyway uh down to need to catch up one day yes we do sir come back to Greeley. you are welcome back to Greeley anytime man um <laughs> it'd be good to see you um all right all right I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out. Um, thank you guys for watching this. And uh, yeah, it, if there's anybody who, I don't know how you would have gotten here if you weren't like, if you hadn't hit let, like the bell and the subscribe thing and all that in order to uh, to see that I was doing this. But um, if you need to do that, and if you'd like to be notified next time I jump on, it's, it's probably going to be tomorrow afternoon, I think, actually. I've got some time tomorrow afternoon to write. Uh, Saturday I'll probably write as well, do some recording. It's going to be a blitz for the next uh, two weeks at least, trying to get two charts done. Um, and uh, that are definitely due, and I kind of need to keep rolling all the way through Thanksgiving break and all that stuff. Well, I go home for Thanksgiving break, but around that time, school's finals uh, through December, I'm going to be writing, writing, writing all the way up to the beginning of the year uh, at this point. So I hope to see you guys uh, on board and hang out with me a little bit and uh, watch the process. Let me know if I'm doing something stupid. So, <laughs> so save and... Cheers. We'll uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a bunch. <laughs>